Hey everybody, this is the uh, May 8th, 2019 meeting of the Merrimack Agricultural Commission. The time is 7.08. Good evening, everybody. Any, any comments from the press or public? Seeing none, we're going to move forward into new business. Uh, first item is the summer market. Uh, we have eight or nine vendors already signed up. Great start. Um, I have a sign-up sheet, too, for... The, all of the commissioners who are going to help uh, open and close the Wednesday market being passed around. Um, I would like to ask the commission if I could have a roll of postcard stamp and uh, so I can mail the reminder postcards to the farmers market this month. I'll make a motion to approve. Thir 35 cents each, $35 if it's 100 $35. For Bob's who purchased stamps for the summer market mailing. Post it. For postcard stamps. Postcard yes. stamps. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Three zero. Anybody against? Thank you all. Um, that'll be easy because I have a bunch of postcards left over from last year. I don't even have to print. Got to print some labels and names and put the stick stamps out of my. Um, let's skip the winter market for the moment. Maybe we'll come back to that. The community garden item C um, is all set up for everybody. Um, all of you that have signed up, you're welcome to start raking and pruning and um, putting your fencing in at the Mer Washington Community Garden. We've sold approximately 55 to 60 plots already. We have 100 available. So there's many more available. If anybody out there is interested in gardening this year at the Merrimack Community Garden which is at Wasserman Park. Please contact me or contact uh, through the town hall. We have a Gmail site, Merrimack Agricultural Commission. Um, and I'll get right back to you. You can either take the application off, off the web or I can mail you one, whatever you prefer. The price for a 10 by 10 garden plot this year is $10. Not going up nor going down. Same price for the last 11 years. Plenty of good sites available. Um, please go take a look if you're interested at all. It's pretty easy to do, and it's a size that uh, is easily maintained. I will turn the water on sometime next week, although the, the, the loam right there now is amply moist. Uh, right now we're not putting any tomatoes in or anything like that, but it, you could put cold cover crop, lettuce, cabbage, onions, that type of thing in. Um, Community Garden, Westman Park. Item D, last week, two weeks ago, Paul. You take this, Paul. Continue, uh, two weeks ago, we held a container planting demonstration at the Winter Market. I had a few people stop by and check it out. And I think they walked away with some good information. I think it was very well presented, very well presented. I thank you for doing that, Paul. No, I mean, it was a lot of work. Um, and we saw how the uh, how the winter market clicked. Questions? Oh. Maybe we'll do it again next year. Yeah. Thank you. Item E is bug alert. There's a couple of caterpillars that are going to start coming out right now. Uh, on, on the crab apple species and that the tender leaf stuff, we're going to soon we're going to be seeing eastern ten caterpillar. It's, it comes every year. It has a web nest early in the spring. And by the middle of May, we may or may not see some gypsy moth caterpillars this year. Because we had so much rain last year, maybe the egg masses didn't survive. Maybe they did. We don't know. Um, by the middle of May, they'll be minute. They'll be quarter of an inch long. But the gypsy moth caterpillar is black, has a red head on it. Um, it's a leaf chewer, likes oaks and maples, and all the soft tissue. Um, and then, as always, we have ticks. I got a tick on me the other day. I was surprised. I got it off in time. They had to pull it off. Um, they're out there everywhere right now. Black fly is also out there. We have physical evidence here. <laughs> <laughs> or no seams, depending on what part of the country you're coming from. Anyway. Um, what else? Upcoming workshops, item F. Seminars. Got a short list to give best. I'll go through a few of them. <clears throat> uh, 
Food Safety for Poultry and Rabbit Producers, North Haverhill, New Hampshire, Thursday, May 9th, tomorrow, all day, 9 to 3.30, UNH Extension Service. For those of us that sell poultry at the farm stand um, or at farm markets and um, that sell rabbits or pieces thereof, uh, USDA, in- USDA inspection is required in New Hampshire res- restaurants. Um, this program will fulfill the educational requirements specified in the rules to help producers develop a working plan for safe meat products. Tree Fruit Twilight Meeting, Wednesday, May 15th at Patch Orchards, Lebanon, New Hampshire. They're going to go over cider presses, new orchards, um, block maple, and a new building that they put up and show everybody how it's done. George Hamilton is there. Um, 5.30 to 7.30, Twilight Meeting. I have the contact information. I have George's contact information if you need it. It is available online. Thursday, May 16th, Green Bow Farm in North Haverhill. They're going to talk about fence mending, how to build the right fence for your livestock and management system. Um, I guess the fence guy is going to be there. It's an NRC demonstration. Um, talk about construction methods and materials, permanent or, or temporary, and common troubles with electric fences at the farm and how to fix them. Again, uh, NRC, Grafton County Conservation, Pamela Gilpert at nh.nac.nacdnet.net. I can give that again to you if you want to. Call me or if you didn't get it in time. May 18, Saturday, a pasture walk in Sullivan, New Hampshire at the Five Sigma Farm, 9.30, 11.30. We have a flush of growth now in pastures between May and June. Half of the, half of the year's growth is going to be in six weeks. And they're going to talk to you about it and tell you how to stretch it out, how to use it, how to cut it, save it for later in the year, that type of thing. I think it's a very informative walk if anybody's looking to keep their pasture, make it live longer, make it use, more useful. Uh, and that's all I really have for questions or contact, any information, please let me know. I'll get it right to you. Um, you want to be next? I can. For sense, I please. think I am. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm just going to go over uh, last month. I did a few tips on going and showing. And this uh, month, new one on uh, teaching the horse to trail ride, or actually seven things to teach your horse to trail ride. And one of them, teach your horse to load willingly because it's no, no fun going on a trail ride if you can't get your horse on the trailer. So big red flags go up when you see someone having trouble loading because it tells, tells you that the willingness of the horse or the unwillingness of the horse, and if he has respect for the rider, and so you do need to work on that. Um, loading into a trailer is a basic to trail riding. You won't get too many far-flung trails without a willing traveler. Although horses tend to be a little claustrophobic by nature, most learn to tolerate hauling, given enough time and patience. But loading problems are usually not just about getting into a trailer. They're almost always about you and your horse and where you stand in his estimation of your leadership skills. So that's always the first thing to work on is so you can get off to a good start. Secondly, teach your horse to go where you point him. A good trail horse will go willingly over obstacles, around rocks, down canyons, and especially through water. At some point, you're going to come to water that you have to cross, and if your horse refuses, you're going to have a problem. So that's, that's number two. Be sure that the horse goes willingly on the trail. Teach your horse to come back to neutral. A good trail horse will keep a cool head no matter what is happening around him. Number four, teach your horse be careful about where he puts his feet. He has four of them, and he should know where they are and where you want him to put them. So that's something to keep in mind when you're on different kinds of terrain. 
number five, I'm making this brief. Number five is teach your horse to overcome the flight instinct. One day you'll be ambling along the trail and in the blink of an eye, you'll come across a bear or deer or more likely um, a bush with fangs. Your horse split second reaction should be to stop, not bolt, and wait for your cue. So there again, you have to be prepared for what is out on the trail and your horse needs to have be trained to respect you and uh, what you're asking of him or her. Of course, you can't expect your horse um, to never spook, but you'll want to teach him not to overreact when he does. Easygoing horses who quickly recover from surprises make the best mounts for trail riding, but it's wise to spend uh, time building any horse's confidence. Number six is teach your horse to maintain his independence from other horses. If your horse is friendly with his herd mates, that's fine, but if he's glued to the tail of the horse in front of him, that's not. Likewise, one horse in the group trots, your horse should not have to trot too, unless you're asking him to trot. And in, in, that's number six. An insecure horse is more likely to be herd bound than a more confident one, but aggressive horses also exhibit a related behavior, a tendency to be bossy or pushy toward other horses. Exercise such as gradually lengthening the distance between you and other riders and keeping the horse's attention on you at all times, which is the heart of all herd bound issues. The reason he's looking to other horses is because he doesn't trust you, and that's the number one thing you need to develop in a good trail horse. Number seven, teach a horse to head out as eagerly as he heads home. A good trail horse has to be able to go anywhere without issue. He won't jig, grow anxious, or bolt for the barn at the first sign you're hurrying, hurrying for home. Barn sour horses typically lack confidence and have many of the same tendencies as the herd bound horse and they may even be attached to their herd mates as well as to familiar surroundings. Thank you, Mr. Three days. One, one thing that I always did when I trail ride is I never come back the same way. I don't go to one point and turn around and go back. I always rode in circles. Really? Yes. So the horse never got the point where you went to one spot and mm -hmm. automatically you turned, because horses are creatures of habit. Mm -hmm. So you can go down the trail and say, oh, this is where I turned to go back home. You, it, it, because a barn sour horse, that's what they're looking for. They're, they just want to get back to the I barn. Right. So if you go, and I would ride in different circles. Huh. So you, you just don't stop here and say, okay, now we turn around and go back, because that's, the horse gets used to that. You know, it's like horses that, that are um, used in trail riding. Right. You know, you go to this point, and then, okay, this is as far as we go, and then we turn around and go home. So, so I have a question. Um, years ago, a lot of years ago, uh, I was in Grand Canyon, and we rode the mules. You actually rode the mules yeah. down the Grand Canyon? Well, uh, up on top. We didn't go down to Imperial Gardens, but which is smarter, a horse or those mules? Mule, if you're riding in the Grand Canyon. <laughs> well, they don't go all the way because it's nine miles well, all the way down, but it, there's, they go halfway and they come back up. But you're like... You well, know, mules are self-preserving. Mules mm -hmm. are not flighty like a horse, and mm -hmm. they're, they're, for the most part, uh, or mules will save themselves. They're not going to uh -huh. throw themselves off a cliff. Because the trail is oh, literally... Yeah. Well, that's you know, why they use mules. They would never put a really? horse on those. I mean, it would be death sentence. You horses... Draw, I've never... They had over 200 of them. I mean, not all horses. I mean, those yeah. people like that, you know, the fancy trainers and things that, uh -huh. you know, uh, what's his name? And all those Western guys that train these horses and they... I mean, they probably could do it with their horses. Right, right, right. But the average yeah. riding horse, like... <clears throat> You like ours, mm -hmm. uh, probably you you would be. They broke. shoe they shoe the mule. I don't know if they do on those. You know the severity of the. But see, mules. The, the army used mules uh -huh. for pack animals because they uh -huh. were smart, and and the mule will take care of themselves. And you mm -hmm. always had a lead mule, really? and that lead mule, the other mules will follow that lead mule, and whatever huh. that lead mule does, the others do. Really? So if they if that lead mule decides, hey, we're out of here. <laughs> And we're not doing this anymore because we're being abused. The others just, you know. I don't know how they would turn around some of those it's, so a, it's quite a history in the Army, yeah. you know, for mules because yeah. they are so, uh, uh, you know, they're not going to, they're not flighty like horses, huh. usually. Huh. I have a good book if you want to read about them. Big ears and everything. Oh, really don't you love it? Interesting. I have big ears. So no, no, I, I mean, I, know, when I, I'm, I still have the memory of, the, of that corral full of them. Yeah, you know, but I no, mean, they're, they're, that's why they use mules, because they're, they're so much more trustworthy, and, and yeah. they're, they're not going to, you know, 
and oh. they're more sure-footed. Yeah, I yeah. believe it. I definitely believe it. Yeah. There wasn't a horse there. Oh, no. I doubt it. Imagine how many people had to ride them, you know. So I, I wouldn't even do that. And I've ridden, yeah. I mean, I, he wouldn't. <laughs> Well, you have to be I mean, younger, you're I looking think. down yeah. over that. Mm. No, but mules, the mules are a whole different yeah. thing. Thank you, Bess. Uh, Treasurer's report, moving right along. Sure. Did you give it to me? Yes, you did. Yeah, I think it's in Sorry. there. Okay. The Agriculture Commission Farmers Market Fund account as of 4-30-2019 is $5,156.93. The Community Garden Fund account is $2,361.97 with a combined total of $7,518.90. And the winter market account is at $367.09. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> review of draft minutes, April 10. Well, I looked at them, the, the ones you sent. They looked okay to me. I, of course, I hope you... You know what I changed uh, when well, you do, like, seconded? I know, the, but... Uh, I changed stuff like that. That's all I did. You don't have... Well... well either way. Let's see. It, it looks nice when it's the, two, the TH. <laughs> but I, that's why I send it to you. You can have your... Way with the minutes. I'd like to make one change, if you guys don't okay, mind. Okay, not at all. In the community gardens, uh, mm -hmm. Ron and Paul um, assisted me okay. with, this, with this project. Okay. okay. So, minutes. When we put the stakes together. Okay. We had hoped for a third, but it didn't happen. All right. Well, see, Paul wasn't here when we did this. The last meeting, right? You could be right. He could wasn't right. here. No, he wasn't present, so I mm -hmm. wouldn't. I just want to make it right. Then. Okay. No, we so will okay. correct that. Sure. Take credit for the work. Oh, <laughs> okay. well, you should. Um, <clears throat> comments from the press, comments from the public, uh, comments from the commission. I do have an email response from Joe Lee. I showed it to Paul. I'd like you to take a look at it. You can keep it if you want, Bess. She explained where the money went. Oh, good. Last year. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, well, we'll just... And um, I talked to Tammy about issuing uh, the Cucumber Project thing. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's going out yet, but uh, I'm sure it's going to be. Um, and other than that, I've been feeding her, like, community garden money here and there when I get it, um, and some farmer's market money. But on the other end, nothing else is coming that we know. Oh. So, um, I don't know if I need to talk about the winter market at all. I mean, for lack of um, well, because probably what you wanted to. Um, I wanted to talk about it, but it's not. It, it's a null point right now. You know. Maybe I just send an email to him and ask him what happened. Well, it's almost over. Are we paid up to date on rent, or we do not have any of that information? There's been no money since April 9. Right. <clears throat> and he told us when he left the meeting last, he was going to go look into it. So I have no information other than that. So. Okay, well, that's from June. When is the final date of the... Uh, it would be, um, let's see, let me flip back one. No, if we start on the... May 29. We're starting on June, what is it, June? June 12. 12. Actually, June 5th is the last possible day. So that's coming up pretty soon. Yeah, it's only, yeah. Three weeks? Three, four weeks. Yeah. Um, I also got something from Shaw's. Uh, we're talking about the reusable bag program. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I put that in the minutes. Okay. Um, during the month of May... Uh, your organization will receive a $1 donation from every bag that is sold from the Shaw store that way. Yeah. In DW Highway. I think that's what I put. Didn't okay. I put that in? Well, I got this April 19th. I don't know if, if we Well, had I did this. that. I put it in. Um... <clears throat> did you have this letter, Bess? Yes, I... from the 
Yes, because uh, oh, I put it there. down. I'm, I'm, I'm doubling down on it. I, I apologize. I didn't think we had this. Um. Because the last meeting was April 10. Yes, it was the letter from Megan Donahue, program manager for the Shaw's. You're right. Okay. Get back so you have the bag purchases at the mm -hmm. Shaw's store located at 570 Daniel Webster Highway. So those of you out there listening, everybody that purchases a uh, permanent Shaw's bag is going to donate to the Community, Agri Garden. community Gardens a dollar from your uh, purchase. Thank you very much for that. It goes to um, Bigger and Better Community Gardening in Merrimack. Um, any other comments from the commissioners? I don't think so. The next meeting will be June 12th. Um, it's garden time, everybody, so get out there. Uh, start up the rototillers. Sharpen your tools. Pick out some seeds. Go to the greenhouses and look at the, the vegetable plants that are growing. Um, there's quite a selection right now. Um, you can probably put your tomatoes out the latter part of May with discretion. Be aware there might be a frost. Um, I'm planting onions right now, but they're a cold crop. You can plant cabbages and lettuce and things like that Broccoli. right now. Broccoli. Things that can take the cold evenings. Uh, we have a lot of rain. It helps us to an extent, but we would like to see dry times too to make the planting easier and the tilling easier. Food for thought. Well, the full moon is the 18th, I think. Uh, really? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's right. Never mind. It's the 18th. Uh, there is a, a farmer's market Saturday, May 18th at Tractor Supply in Merrimack. It's free. There will be a variety of vendors. And if you are a vendor, you're, you can speak to the um, person in charge at Tractor, the store manager, to um, attend as a vendor in the parking lot. Uh, they do this every year, well well attended. A lot of people going in the building, so it's a chance, an opportunity to um, display your wares and make a few sales. May 18th, I'm not sure if it's all day long, but it's at least morning into the afternoon. Uh, the store manager in Merrimack is Brian. So it's food for thought. Anything else? No. Good for now. Motion to... Adjourn. adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. I will second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Seven thirty. Yep. Thanks for having us. We'll see you all on June twelfth. Next meeting.